Are there any apologies? I'm not aware of any. Are there any declarations of interest on any of the items before us? We don't have any. Let's move swiftly on to item three, which is the Community Investment Fund. And Fiona, are you going to introduce for us? Yes, convener, thank you. Is this on? I can hear it. Thank you. So, committee members, the report that you've got in front of you is a very specific report. You're asked to consider recommendations from local area partnerships who, on the advice in turn of grant panels for each ward in Perth and Kinross, are putting forward a set of grant recommendations for year one of the Community Investment Fund. Um, there's a lot of information in appendices about the number of applications that we received and the total amount of funding that was bid for, and you'll have knowledge of some of these from your own um, ward areas. I think the points, a couple of points to stress. One is that although we had quite a slow start initially with the Community Investment Fund, we did, by the end of year one, have a huge response to it. Uh, as you probably know already, nearly 150 applications and a total um, value of, of funds bid for of 1.5 million, nearly 1.6 million. Great diversity of applications from different communities. Some challenges um, and some learning, I think, for the grant panels um, and for council officers as well. This is the first time we've tried to administer a fund of this scale at local level. Um, we have a further report coming to SPNR full committee on the 17th of April, which goes into more detail about what we have learnt and how we propose that year two of the fund should be administered. And we have a series of options for committee members to consider about how year two should work. But that's all I want to say by way of introduction, because I'm sure you'll have questions. the Deputy Chief Executive Advance notice of a question just um, to clarify um, that all of the projects um, met the criteria for being um, community-led. Um, it wasn't a concern that I had noted on reading through the paper, but it was a concern that was raised with me by members of the community that um, about the PCAS projects that are supported um, in one of the ward applications. Thank you, convener. Thank you, Councillor Stewart. Um, the, every project that was put in was judged by the ward panel against the criteria that were in, and the ward panel made the decisions on whether they were local projects or not. So it was down to the panel to make those decisions. I don't know, Fiona, if you have, or David, have anything else to add? as regards to specific PCAVs projects? Um, only briefly to say that I mean, PCAVs were eligible to apply because they are a third sector organisation. The projects that they applied for in Ward 3 were both projects, and um, I think our team just did the due diligence on this, Councillor Stewart. They are projects which are being delivered in that ward um, with specific benefits in mind for people living uh, in that ward. Uh, thank you. And then uh, a separate question, um, just for clarity, because I don't think it's pulled out in the paper, but some of the, uh, <coughs> the funding uh, available for individual projects was uh, between £3,000 and £50,000. Some of the recommended awards are below the £3,000 level. It was, I, I know the answer to the question, but it's really just to put it on the record and clarify that those projects which are recommended for awards of less than £3,000 actually applied for more than 3000 and it's the individual award panels that have recommended the scale back um, in order that they could best distribute the money within their uh, ward areas. Yeah, all the, um, all the project applications we received were, as I say, between three and five, tw uh, sorry, three and 50000 so any, any awards that were made below that 
as you as you anticipate the um, the decisions of the ward panels themselves. So. Thanks. Further questions? I was just wondering how the project would be able to, if you take Dunning Tennis Club, if they were in for £3,000 for their project that was going to reduce inequalities, etc., and they got 290, how they would manage to um, fulfil the project? S sorry, Councillor Lang, sorry, just to repeat your question, how would the project genuinely deliver inequalities? Well, uh, the equalities criteria, if, the, if their application was for £3,000 to, to take it to the minimum amount, it was £3,000, and they were awarded £290, how they would manage to uh, proceed the project with less than 10% of the monies we needed? I think we'd have to check the detail of that with the ward, with the ward panel, um, Councillor Legg. I don't have the answer on that particular one. Thank you. I think in relation to the Dunning project, that was about supplying equipment and the, the rest of the, the project was about actually putting a facility in place to the degree that they could supply the equipment without the facility being in place and it would still have the same benefits. So there are extensive, there is a lot of extensive detail at the back of this and also each project that was agreed was signed off by the panel chair um, and anybody, all the successful projects and the done successful projects will get feedback <coughs> from the projects. I'd just uh, like to move the paper and say that uh, this council has committed 1.2 million of funding over 18, 19 and 19, 20 to the Community Investment Fund on the basis of £50,000 award per year. A total of 149 applications were received in 1819, totaling a request of just under £1.6 million. Pounds. In each ward, a panel has been established to assess the applications and the recommendations on how to invest up to £50,000. Ward panels have recommended awarding funding to 105 separate projects to a value of £580. The report summarises the recommendations from each ward panel. The report also asks the committee to approve the carryover of funds in those wards where the full £50,000 wasn't awarded and a separate report will come before SPNR committee in due course with lessons learned. Happy to move the paper. Can we agree the paper? Have we any comments on the paper? Uh, I was, the comment would uh, really be that um, in the SPNR report and hopefully taken forward, there'll be a, a lessons learned on and maybe even training for panel uh, members next year to, with the criteria in front of them, uh, just so as we can be sure that everything we're awarding does fit the criteria if we're ever asked to justify it in the future. Yep, I think that's reasonable. Okay. Councillor Duggan? I think, um, I think I'm happy both as a member of my own uh, local partnership and a member of the subcommittee to uh, sign up to a, a um, continuous improvement agenda with this. It's always going to be slightly difficult and new territory at the beginning and I saw it um, in the way that our uh, Per City um, panels um, uh, convened and transacted their applications in, in slightly different ways. Um, and I think that room for manoeuvre has to apply to the applications at the early stage as well. I think we possibly want to over time develop a kind of ranking and uh, possibly even a penalty factoring system um, because uh, uh, I think that I can't actually set out what my idea of a hierarchy would be but for example something that's happening anyway, getting money to keep doing that, I would say we'd have a lesser um, a priority than something that's new, something with a very sketchy business plan, uh, which is based primarily on um, aspiration rather than evidence or something like that would be um, uh, troublesome. Also, um, material improvements to buildings would have to be in future, in my view, predicated on a very clear assessment of how that improvement would affect inequalities within communities. And I'm, I, I'm treading very carefully on that one because in my own ward, substantial investment in buildings, but I happen to be very aware of the um, work that they do to challenge inequalities there. And I'm not saying that that's not the case in the Kirkmichael 
social and recreational hall, which is just one that happens to be on the page. It's not on my tablet just now, but it could equally be any other. I've got no more concern for that than any or less than any other. Um, but uh, I think possibly by the panels weren't quite as cited on their ability to carry funds forward. Um, and there was a, maybe a desire to burn it down um, rather than invest it wisely. Um, but these are all um, a fair degree of supposition in what I'm saying, convener, and I accept that. Um, but I, I, I would like to see substantial improvement as we go forward. Um, and I, I guess maybe um, officers might want to um, provide some reassurance around about that. Yeah, I think <coughs> it's all we're good. all aware that this is our, our first attempt at this, and there will be a, a fairly, um, hopefully, robust process of lessons learned. There will, as we evolve, be more stringent criteria, I'm sure, because once the, the, all the communities get more familiar with this, I suspect the demand will go up as well. So there is a, a definite case for more robust criteria going forward. And the point that point's well made. I think your point about increased demand is, is I hope that very, I very much hope that happens because yeah. uh, the competition for this money will be very helpful when it becomes established as a thing. <coughs> um, and, um, but it's, it's all good. Yeah. Okay, any other comments? Councillor Barrett. Um, I think I would just like to uh, echo the, the earlier comments that this is um, all good. I, I, I think um, over 100 um, community organisations benefiting from um, almost £600,000 um, um, as, a, as a first go of what will be an iterative process um, is, is, is a really good start. Um, I think, yes, there are um, um, con concerns to ensure that there remains a, a really tight focus uh, on driving out uh, inequalities through the uh, Community Investment Fund uh, and ensuring that uh, the, 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 the funds uh, granted uh, are, are in a close alignment uh, with the local outcome and improvement plans. Uh, but I think this is a, a really good start. Um, it's, you know, 100-odd uh, organisations um, who will, we will be strengthening their ability uh, to make a, a, a difference in the grassroots uh, of their uh, communities. We need to see how it goes and we need to uh, be encouraging uh, uh, th those groups as members of local action partnerships uh, now to deliver on the projects that they've received funding for. Uh, but I think it is uh, a really good news story. Okay, Fiona Robertson first. Councillor Stewart. So just briefly, I know that you're into comments, um, councillors, but as you're a small, a small band, I think, I mean, the points made about lessons learned, I think, are well made by all the committee members and a couple of things just to reassure on. I think one training, um, we, we were, it took us a little while to get ahead of the curve on the fund the first time round, but we have already identified that as something we need to do. I think in terms of Councillor Duggan's point, um, one of the things that we are keen to do at the end of year two is do a little bit of analysis or more analysis of the applications that have come forward and what they are telling us at a deeper level, if you like, about needs and priorities. Um, because, as you say, we don't want to see um, the money go towards things that would probably happen anyway or could happen via other means and the Dunning Tennis Club is an interesting example because the Sports Council exists to give you know some kind of similar support not exactly the same support so there's something about aligning this with other um, funds that we or other organizations run but I think that data about what is it that grassroots level communities are saying they need money to do and what does that tell us about maybe some bigger decisions in terms of how we allocate resources is really important. Councillor Stewart. Sorry. F Fiona, um, will we be using the, the information, say for uh, Dunning uh, Tennis Club, is it Dunning Tennis Club? When, when, we, when we reply to them and, and tell them that they got their 290 pounds or whatever and send it, will we all also signpost them? to like said sports council if money is there as well instead of just there's your check but we're actually signposting to other funding sources yes and um, we've offered there will be a feedback process for every um, unsuccessful applicant as well as applicants who didn't get everything that they asked for 
Um, we also send out, you're probably aware of it anyway, Councillor Lang, but we send out a regular funding bulletin to all community organisations just so they're aware of funds that are available that they can bid to, not just within the council, but other sources as well. Uh, thank you, Convener. Um, <clears throat> I think the, the, um, in relation to Councillor Dugan's point uh, about lessons learnt, that was reflected in the report, and it was always part of the, 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 the it was always the intention when setting up the community investment fund that the first year we would go through the process, and it's reflected in the report that there will be a lessons learnt um, paper coming back to the next meeting with uh, strategic policy and resources. Um, I think anybody that sat on one of the ward panels would 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 have a, a number of comments to feed back. Um, certainly it was a, a steep learning curve um, for us on the Strathmore Ward panel um, when we convened at, um, at seven o'clock and couldn't get into our first venue and got into a second venue at about quarter past seven as the clock was approaching eight o'clock and we had not quite finished discussing the first one out of our 14 applications. I was concerned about whether we might be going on until the small hours of the morning but we took longer over the first one to understand what we were doing properly and then we speeded up and um, uh, got, uh, got through the, the remaining 13 applications um, uh, an awful lot uh, quicker. But it's a, just a reflection, I think, of the fact that this was a new thing, a, a new project, a new fund, a new way of doing things um, for everybody, um, council officers, um, councillors, action partnership members, ward panel members, um, uh, and we will we will learn from from that and take it forward. Um, I said before in the press, I think, um, that I was looking forward to the, the 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 range of projects that the communities would bring forward, and I was delighted to see um, the range of projects outlined in the report, um, and indeed the range of projects even just in my own ward, which where we made um, uh, we were able to make war, uh, awards right across the. Um, a, a number of different projects, but also across the, the, the whole of the geography of, um, of uh, a, a relatively large ward. Um, I think more importantly, what it's interesting to see in relation to the Community Investment Fund is that this is the um, council um, devolving um, responsibility and authority. Here we are um, with the setting up of the Community Investment Fund, and I, I, I look forward to um, a successful second year of the fund, um, but offering a helping hand to communities, letting communities make their decisions from, for themselves as the experts in what goes on um, in their local areas and not, um, although we are formally signing off the recommendations from the ward panels um, at the committee today, <coughs> um, it, it is uh, members of communities um, from across the, the, the 12 wards who've been involved in um, bringing forward the suggestions um, in the first place, the applications, the projects, um, and then also in uh, sifting through those, making recommendations on them. Um, and I think this is an important um, signal um, of a potential way forward for the Council where um, rather than Perth and Kinross Council being necessarily in each and every case um, a decider and a doer, uh, Perth and Kinross Council can be an enabler for communities going forward. Um, and I think the last comment I would like to make is, um, given that my ward panel did last for um, approaching three and a half hours, um, and I'm sure that um, other ward panels um, took um, uh, approaching similar amounts of time in some cases, um, I think that we should put on uh, record our thanks as um, the council to all of those members of the community that formed the ward panels um, and came along and gave up their time on a volunteer basis um, to sift through all of those um, applications and to make those recommendations that I'm very happy to support today. Thank you very much. On, on a final comment, I would also like to thank the officers, who many of whom um, put in a considerable amount of their own valuable time in assisting this and, and coming to various meetings uh, and occasions chairing meetings, etc. But I think their, their um, advice and influence have been invaluable in this process. Um, and if there are no further comments, there's no further business. So I'm happy to wind up the meeting and thank you all for your attendance. <laughs>